top of the sport for quite some time now. But International Quiet Week, main event, I mean, is this an extra special week for you? Yeah, it definitely is. Uh, it's always good to fight on uh, International Fight Week, but to be headlined, you know, something special. Yeah. Incredible fight last time out. Obviously, you didn't get the result you wanted. Controversy, maybe, in the result. But I wonder, a fight like that, are there lessons you take out of that, you know, back to the featherweight division, or is it more just like, yeah, you know, I went out there and I gave the shot? As lessons to be learned, win or lose, you know, win or a win or a loss. Uh, oh, it's, it's play on for me, honestly. Like, uh, you know, that that kit was great. I definitely leveled up in uh, some different areas. So uh, that's why that's why you want to challenge yourself because that, that you know that's that's exactly what will happen. Um, you know, a lot of people look at you know what could go wrong, but you know you got to look at what could go right, and then obviously you look at the future because I'm a lot stronger man for it. And, as I said straight after that fight, these featherweights are better fun to watch out. I love it. And uh, obviously, FCA here that night, it looked incredible. Uh, talking about the preparation room, obviously, you've been fighting nothing but killers for a while, but he seemed to present a unique challenge. I mean, did you find preparation uniquely challenging in this? Yeah, 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 definitely. That's, uh, it's, it's been exciting. You know, I said, uh, I just mentioned like, how good it was to do the, the challenge in uh, Islam, like, you know. It's it's exciting. You want you want them challenges, and this is a totally different challenge uh, when it comes to the ground and the striking. And it, it's I'm disciplined. I'm always going to train hard. Uh, you have been saying that all week, and like uh, I don't need to be motivated or anything to, to train hard and do what I need to do. I'm going to do that anyway. But it just adds another, you know, more excitement. You know, more more eager to get to the gym, figure th things out, the game planning, get more in the zone. You know, really. Uh, embrace some of some of the, the game planning and, the, and all the things that uh, we need to do in there. So it was it was good. And no one again. I've got enough of respect for you. Again, he's a dangerous uh, opponent, and uh, yeah, and that, that's what I want. But I just want to show everyone, you know, why I'm the, the top of these uh, the featherweight division, and uh, yeah, really show my skill set. I think work ethics is something that just ingrained in you. But was it difficult all to adjust? I mean, you're this close to the champ champ status, right? You're kind of embracing all that. Was it hard to get the mindset back? Hey, you know, it's still impressive to dominate in the division the way you have. No, I mean, look, you know, obviously it's done straight after, but play on, man. You know, it's just add to the story. I'm going to get that rematch. Don't worry. I'm going to do my, my business this weekend, and uh, I'll get that rematch. And then it's just going to add to the story. You know what I mean? It was a close one. Did we think we did enough? Yeah. Was it a robbery? No, it was a very, very close fight. Um, I know that, but... Um, I showed you guys and I showed everyone that, you know, well, I definitely wasn't going to get ragged on like everyone thought. Um, and, uh, you know, I ended up on, on top and uh, really put it on him. But the next one, I'll take that win and it's just going to add to the story. Last week, you kind of touched on it there. I mean, a win here obviously would be huge. I know you're, you're impressed with the lead for you. I mean, you want to continue to this goal. I wasn't that impressed, huge word. <laughs> but, uh, you know, but I mean, I'm glad that everyone's impressed because, uh, uh, again, that'll just hype up a future, future fight. Just, uh, yeah, uh, you know, I'm the, uh, yeah, but I've got a, a more of a threat in front of me this weekend, so I'm, I'm going to pay attention to that. If Ilya really, uh, wants that smoke, it's going to be good, because I know he will uh, talk that, that trash, which is fun, and uh, punch people in the face and talk trash is so much better. Alex, just going off that, why exactly weren't you impressed with Ilya? What did you see that we perhaps didn't see in that fight? Oh, mate, I can't give too much away, right? I think... Uh, you know, I think a lot of people could probably touch with some of the things, but uh, yeah, put it this way. People don't look like that when I'm in front of them. You mentioned there about people talking trash. I'm assuming you weren't that impressed with his prediction that he would beat you in the first round. Should you mean? Yeah, yes. Dreaming. With the Islam fight, is that one of those fights where 25 minutes in there with him gives you such a good game plan and blueprint for how to beat him the second time? He's one of those guys that once you compete against him the first time, you know exactly the adjustments you need to make for the second fight. And I knew what adjustments I needed to make as soon as I stepped out of that octagon. Uh, straight away, I was like, man, I wanted that rematch right now. Like, I know what to do. Uh, but, yeah, everyone knows I'm uh, good good with the rematches. And, uh, yes, they're just... Right now, again, I've got to focus on your year Rodriguez, but uh, yeah, that'll come. Yeah. With the Rodriguez thing, you know, you're going from lightweight back down to featherweight. I saw in some of your pre fight stuff that you were saying you felt a lot sharper and more explosive. What's the biggest sort of thing you weren't expecting from the weight changes that you've had over the last year? So, uh, going heavier? Well, so, you've got like, going heavier, then going back lighter. Oh, yeah, but I mean, obviously, notice uh, that, that extra weight. You know, that's why during camp, when I was doing the bulking and I was a little bit heavy, yeah, go on. Doing the, everyone knows the workload that I've got. 
Uh, it was at the end of the week, my body was definitely feeling it, you know, carrying that weight, was obviously moving as much, and just to definitely uh, warn you that a little bit more. Uh, so halfway through the camp, I'm like, I want to be a little bit lighter. I want to be, because I, I reckon I'm going to be just as strong anyway, and I'm going to be fast. So we found that perfect weight, um, and that was a little bit light. So I wasn't too much heavier than I would be this weekend, to be quite honest. Um, not too much anyway. But uh, yeah, it feels good to be at featherweight again, and uh, being as sharp as ever. So. Definitely that, that bulk uh, made me stronger. I, that camp and again rising to that challenge, to that occasion, definitely put um, some of my skills uh, on a whole other level. In some of the footage you put on your YouTube channel ahead of this fight, I've seen some spinning kicks from you that we haven't necessarily seen a lot. Is part of you kind of like, oh, I'd love to knock out you know, you're the spinning kick guy with my own spinning kick? Hey, I do beat a lot of people at their own game, so you never know. So, as I've been saying, Taekwondo bulk is coming from fucking everywhere. Excuse my friends. Um, a lot of talk going into this card about like Robert Whitaker maybe making a quick turnaround for Sydney. Is there any interest on your behalf to do that? Maybe you said you want to be active, or is that maybe too much with like championship points? Oh, I mean, it wouldn't be uh, too much. There's a couple of hurdles there. Like, obviously, you have to make sure you've got the right opponent, make sure there's no injuries and uh, little things like that. But uh, my, uh, yeah, so Emma's, uh, my wife, is uh, due like uh, two days before the Sydney card. So there's another little hurdle there. But, um, yeah. But you know, you know, you know, we're talking to doctors, maybe juice a week earlier, you know what I mean? Like, we'll, we'll see what we can do. Well, all stuff. Um, if we do get Islam and Charles, again, as the next lightweight title fight, do you expect that to go similar, or do you think maybe we get a different result this time? Um, I expect that to go similar. You know, uh, and that's no disrespect. Well, I mean, obviously, Charles is very dangerous. You know, he, he can always catch him, but uh, I think. Uh, He's love style, like you know, he's he's patient. He doesn't take unnecessary risks. Um, so you need to, you know, put it to him uh, in, in different ways than just hoping to, to land some uh, just one shot. I think so. But and I'm not saying that's all our, um, how Charles fights. I just think, look, he's love good. He's well rounded. You know what I mean? A lot of people are trying to say, oh, you know, we found a chicken in the arm, or he's like, you know, I've uh, you know figured the puzzle and all that. It's just, that that's me. That's because I was in front of him. Um, he, he is as good as you were saying, but I just told you that how good I am and uh, was going to show you that. But again, uh, every time I talk about it, I'm just like, I've got my hand raised, right? you know, it's much a better conversation to have. But, um, but yeah, I see you being the same. So uh, I'm, I'm the guy to take that belt. If Charles did win, would I be disappointed? Like, just going back to 155, is it about beating Islam or the belt? What's more important to you? Beating Islam. Alex, over here. Um, you mentioned Charles Oliveira. What did you make of his performance against Benil Darius? Uh, he was counted out by a lot of people, and he went out there and made a statement. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was a. Uh, it was surprising how many people were counting him out. Uh, again, look at who Charles is for. The who's who. It's so dangerous, you know what I mean? So um, I wasn't surprised. I know uh, Darush is very uh, durable and uh, well-rounded, but I mean, uh, I just thought that that matchup wasn't too bad for for for, for Charles. And uh, yeah, they showed that. You know, showed the uh, again. He's a, he's a dangerous dude, so you've got to be uh, careful. You've got to approach uh, him the right way. We were here about a year ago uh, when you fought Max Holloway. You talked about sort of being disrespected a bit by people calling you know there's Max calling him the uncrowned champ and all that. And since then, you've had the fight with Islam, and I know it didn't go your way, but a lot of people felt like you put on a very good effort. How have things changed from the fan, fan perspective? Does it feel like you gained even more fans from that performance against Islam? Yeah, yeah, but, you know, it's uh, obviously the stocks uh, didn't lower after that one anyway. So that's why so many people, you know, were obviously saying to me, like, oh, you know, you should be proud, like, oh, you know, like, because uh, I was surprised. You'd be surprised how many people, and you know, I didn't think I would be, uh, you know, thought that I'd probably get banned here. Like, you know what I mean? And didn't think I'd ask for a chance. And there's probably people close to me that thought that. You know, there, was, there was vibes I was getting, you know, the whole way through the whole thing. It's like, you know, almost why are you doing these vibes? So, uh, you know, so a lot of people didn't expect the fight to look like that, even people close to me. And, um, but yeah, the, that's why a lot of people, you know, oh man, like, you should be so proud. Now they were, you know, very, very happy with that, and obviously the fans as well. So everyone, uh, I, got to sh I still got to show myself, but uh, I, that's why I, it's starting to mean more than. Obviously, it's always going to sting the guy that loses more, but it stumped me because uh, I know I could get that job. I know I, I will. You know, I will get it in the future. But uh, so that's why you know, hearing people congratulate me for losing 
it was pretty tough the first week, but I understand it. Like I'll be, it did help with the help with the loss. You know, a lot of people are like, "How do you take it?" I'm gonna play on. You know, what I mean, I say play on, uh, probably because of my mindset and uh, how I go about things. I just adapt. You know, I've just always been good at doing that. But you know, that that sort of process with everyone being like, "Wow," you know what I mean? Uh, probably helped a bit too. And last one for me, uh, Max Holloway's fighting uh, the Korean Zombie. If you go out there and win on Saturday, do you think we'll see him move up? Because if you're still champion, I don't think we'll see a fourth fight between the two of you. Yeah, man, that's a, uh, you, know, you know, everyone's, uh, yeah, we've all, you know, I'd like to say I've read that book, you've all read that book, you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a tricky situation for him. You know, uh, he's probably, you know, hoping that a year takes me out and then he can get, get a shot. But, um, yeah, I don't plan on that happening. Um, can I ask what this uh, mandate is on your face? You know, you don't know Nelly. Nelly, you know what I mean? Is that a USC champion? You know, yeah, it's, it is actually, you know what I mean? Like, nah, look, there's a, a little scratch and uh, you know, we don't want to get it uh, infected uh, so close to the, to the fight. So, yeah. Um, can I ask, because yeah, has been in the USC, like he was in the USC before you. I think it looks cool to be honest. It doesn't look bad. They, they custom, you know, they custom made uh, the Mexican uh, uh, belt or whatever it is. They custom made some band-aids for him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how long was Gary been on your radar? Because he was in the UFC, he had a lot of highlights even before you came over, so it felt like he took a, there were a lot of breaks in his career, but like how long what, what is, how long has he been on your radar as a future fan? Oh, um, they're all on my radar, right? Like I keep an eye on everybody, but he's definitely been right up there. You know, there's, he's had a couple of uh, number one contender fights as well, being in a position where, uh, you know, knowing that he could be next or coming, coming up soon. So he's, uh, definitely, because I know how dangerous he is, so I knew he would uh, eventually be there. But I uh, just had to wait for the right time that uh, you know, it was his turn. And being interim champ, it's his turn. So the, the timing uh, fits very well, and here we are international following. Do you pay attention at all to the, the top of the band wave division too? Because there's fighters like Alvin Reed Sterling that says, like, well, look, if I beat Sean O'Malley, I'm going to go up. And that's another possible yep. super fight for you. So uh, do you pay attention down there as much? Too? Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, uh, I think if he, if he goes out there and takes that short, like he's definitely paid, paid his dues. Uh, how many times defences would that be? Four, yeah. Like a, yeah, so th there you go. I think I think so. Uh, he's a big dude. But, uh, yeah, just so obviously he's got a tough tough fight ahead of him. But, uh, yeah, that's another possible uh, fight. So, uh, yeah, there's, a, there's, there's plenty of options. And, again, I want to be active, so could keep it wrong. Are the Nuggets going to be in attendance? Uh, yeah, I think Jamal Murray is definitely going to be there. I don't know who else, so... See, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a Nuggets guy. So, yeah, it was, it was good. The timing was perfect, actually. So, I ended up uh, meeting him in August last year, and he got to the season, uh, season. I was backing him, and, and they won. Perfect. And right. I was going to be here international final week to support me, so I'm looking forward to it. And the last one for me, Saturday's going to be Rob Lawler's last fight uh, in the UFC. So, I'm curious if you have any favorite memories or favorite fights from his career. Oh, I mean, there's so many. Uh, so many. I mean, uh, that that ball that had the face off, you know what I mean? And his lip was just completely open. Uh, you know that's got to be a pretty pretty iconic uh, moment. So even us, me and uh, myself and uh, Ortega had like a face off. You know what I mean? I was even like sort of thinking I get there, them sort of vibes. You know what I mean? So that just shows you, you know, that's a big moment for me. But you know, I, I think of that when I when I look at that Ortega, so it shows you how much of a big. Uh, Big moment uh, that was, especially the, the blood they had and you know the war they had. It was uh, it's crazy. Alex, People always remember those fights. Alex, just yep. over here. Uh, you mentioned about the transition back down to 145. Was that hard? And do you see yourself being able to do that successfully, going back and forth through the divisions? Yeah, no, that wasn't too hard actually. I did, as I said, I didn't end up that much heavier. So we did the body scans uh, once we you know we knew the fight was happening and. We were sitting at pretty much the same uh, that that same weight or like muscle and everything as we did like for July last year. So it's a, I don't think we actually put on too much. So uh, and I don't want to for next time I'm at my weight. I know what I need to because um, the, the strength's not the issue. issue. Uh, yeah, then I know my, my my strength and my technique will be enough for for all the, the light weights anyway. So then that'll make that transition much easier. Do you think that would impact? Your performances at all at light weight, making that transition? No, nah, because I'm going to sit around pretty much the same weight. Mm -hmm. And um, you worked with Carl Van Roon in the run up to this fight. How beneficial was that? Oh, yeah, it's a. Uh, I was lucky enough to have a couple of people in camp that 
And UAE is very good uh, at all ranges. Long range, obviously you've got the type of dough, and uh, then you've got the short range, sort of uh, unpredictable things that come from everywhere. So I was lucky enough to have Blood, Blood Diamond, who's a, if you've ever watched his uh, kickboxing highlight, highlights, go have a look at that, and uh, you'll see a lot of Yair y- y- Rodriguez uh, there. So that was great having him there, and obviously he's bitter. Uh, and then Calvin Roon, that 11-time uh, Taekwondo world champion, you know, uh, he's a specialist at what he does, and he does MMA, he understands the game. Uh, he did a lot of study and really committed to being a training partner for me, and he's, again, a lot bigger than me. So having uh, guys like that to not just go through and uh, work techniques, you know, spar on these guys. So, uh, you know, having a longer, rangier, 11-time world champion uh, type of those guys spitting some crazy shit at you, um, that'll keep you on your toes. So, uh, you know, I'll be on my toes uh, uh, ready for whatever comes uh, come uh, Saturday night. And when you look at Yaya's style, what do you think you need to be aware of the most? And how do you see the fight itself playing out? Uh, be aware of everything, because everything's come from everywhere. But uh, again, it's we all know that I make people fight my fight. There's other things that, uh, you know, everyone looks a certain way till I'm in front of them. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, it's uh, no surprise that, people, uh, you know, my opponent's volume goes down uh, and a lot of their assets, strong assets, are usually a compromise. You know, I'm usually able to nullify a lot of people's uh, strengths. So, uh, Look forward to doing that. Again, Taco Dobal, he's Calvin. Thank you. Uh, so we're here. You mentioned before that you consider Conor McGregor a dream match for yours as he's the only UFC featherweight champion you have faced. Uh, anything can happen, obviously, but is there any other fighter on the roster? Sorry. I'm right here. <laughs> we're back here. Guys. Oh, yeah. Oh, the back there. Sorry, man. Yeah, there you go. Uh, did you get that first part? Or? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll get it. So uh, anything ha- can happen, obviously, but is there any other fighter on the current roster? within the featherweights or lightweights that you would love to face, or even a past fighter that you would have loved to share the cage with? Ah, uh, yeah, there's, a, there's plenty, but uh, there's a lot of a lot of fun fights at at lightweight, you know what I mean? So, you never know whether the BMF is gone as well, maybe BMF, you know, we'll go, we'll go, what? Get free belts, you know what I mean? Get a BMF, put the, get an actual champ that, uh, I know, I think that, that, that'd be cool, you know, get, uh, get some credibility on that uh, BMF belt, uh, having a champ that, that goes and takes it as well. So I think that'd be, that, that's another option, there you go. I mean, they're great fights as well, so uh, there's a reason why they're getting it. You know, they're exciting, uh, big names. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of exciting fights. But I mean, these are, these are fights that can definitely happen in the near future. That's um, awesome. And uh, you were talking about your teammates, but you got to watch one of them, Craig Jones, compete on the Fight Pass Invitational. How special was that to see him compete and win, even walk out to your song as well? Yeah, that was uh, that was cool. I didn't expect that. I didn't know he was going to walk out to the song. But uh, yeah, good. You know, he didn't, uh, he faced a, a, you know, a legend of the sport. Who's no, who's no joke. And to go out there and uh, take the win was, was awesome. A uh, beautiful way to start the week. Uh, you know, we had a little trip here to Vegas and I'll end it uh, with uh, another big win and then we can uh, probably celebrate afterwards. And uh, last one for me. I and excess, it runs a body. I see that Brian Bottle next to you. Uh, oh, yeah. Congratulations on the deal. How did that deal come together? Yeah, just, uh, yeah, obviously it's a, a big deal. Uh, massive opportunity. And uh, yeah, just uh, got talking uh, to Logan. I met him a couple of times and yeah, that's how it started. Yeah, Alex. Uh, and we're in our prime, right? So, perfect fit. Oh, back up here. Yeah. Uh, quick question for you. You know, as big of a betting favorite as it really comes in terms of a champion fighting the number one contender, let alone an, an interim champion, you know, how does it feel to get this much respect from the odds makers? Yeah, it's a. Uh, I think it's well deserved. You know, what I mean, that's no disrespect to Yai. I think that's just uh, all because of, of what I've done, and you know, and uh, again, I always say there's a. You know, people can be a safe bet. You know, when you've got the guy that's got the heart. Uh, resilience, durability, you know, fight IQ, and you know, all the right stuff. You know, what I mean, it, it makes it very hard for people to take him out. So it's good to see that uh, finally people are, you know, really taking note of that. But the beautiful thing about it is, uh, no matter how much of a favourite I am, I have the mindset that I have. I I look at him as a big friend, as I've said, like I've said, uh, pretty much the whole camp. He's probably the most dangerous guy that's been put in front of me. So I can completely zone out everyone's uh, thoughts on, on how they think this fight's going to go because I see these uh, these problems, I see these uh, 
challenges and that helps me really prepare and uh, that's why you'll never see me underdone every time I step in that octagon. Awesome, and then last question for you, you know, in Las Vegas, uh, anything you particularly enjoy about Las Vegas? Uh, everything, I enjoy everything. I mean, uh, uh, yeah, I was asked, you know, what I love about it and what I hate about it. I uh, love and hate both of them. Right now, while I'm cutting weight, not being able to eat, really, really enjoy Vegas, I hate it. But then straight after the fight, I'm going to love it. Uh, so you, uh, you mentioned the earlier years, custom belt that he had up there. You know, the intro belt itself rubs a lot of fans throughout the way, but he's sitting up there with the intro belt and the custom belt both in front of you. Um, what do you think about that? Like, do you think that's maybe any disrespectful at all in the way? Oh, for, for a second, I was a bit of red on that. I was like, wait a second, is this the Mexican one? <laughs> um, no, I, sorry, do I feel disrespected? Yeah, they're sitting up there with two titles and neither of them have undisputed one. Yeah, you know, I mean, I know I'm the champ. Everyone in here knows I'm the champ. The world knows I'm the champ. It doesn't, doesn't phase me one bit. Uh, as I said, and that's no disrespect to Yaya Rodriguez, but mate, make the most of it. Enjoy what it lasts because uh, I plan on winning this weekend. And just last thing, uh, what did you and Mel Gibson talk about? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, just, uh, you know, he's uh, obviously a spin of the sport. You know, you see him at a lot of events. Uh, he's, been, he's been at a couple of my events. And uh, just yeah, just said that uh, he loves uh, seeing uh, someone that's uh, you know just I think his words were excellent at their craft. Uh, something like that. just yeah, just sort of uh, stuff like that. And uh, obviously I've said I was a big fan, and it's cool to have Braveheart saying shit like that to you. Yeah, Alex, um, I just want your thoughts on Ilya Taboria, uh, him as a fighter, and just um, his his fight with Josh Emmett. Uh, do you feel like he's next? Um. Yeah, I think they will use it all hyping him up. A lot of people asking me about it. Uh, so yeah, keep uh, my you know honestly keep my contenders uh, top contenders away from him because I might not be facing him. You know what I mean? Like again, use a use a saying he's a guy. Well, yeah, cool. That's good. Let's let's keep him away from everyone uh, so he can uh, he's gonna get a whooping. Uh, let's make it uh, from me.